This is the new benchmark for all electric cars, factoring price, performance, sizing, styling, mood booster, if you will. Hello and welcome finally to the Hyundai Ionic 5. We are gonna be driving this car together for the first time in today's video. If you can't tell, I'm so excited to get behind the wheel of this thing. First, I'm gonna take you around the car, show you some things, talk about some specifications, and then you're gonna join me for my first driving opportunities of the vehicle. This is in no way my review whatsoever. My opinions are subject to change. This is my first impressions of the car. I do this with every EV, or at least try to with every EV. You guys seem to love the videos. So we're gonna drive the car in the city, on the highway, shredded up the mountains a little bit. You guys know we have to performance evaluate the Ionic 5, at least best we can on the street, not in a track environment. And um, first off, can we just say how cool this thing looks? Is that allowed? This is the coolest looking car on sale. I'm gonna say it, this thing's rad. Here we have the brand new Hyundai Ionic 5. Now in Europe, this car is on sale and being tested by automotive journalists. So here in the US, we're a little bit behind the game. However, during my month tour in Europe recently, I got to spend time with this car's sister car built on the same eGMP, the electric global modular platform uh, chassis that was the Kia EV6. Now the cars will be adapted for the US market with specific suspension and packaging and trim levels. So so here, this is a US spec Ionic 5, my first time getting behind the wheel of Ionic 5. And wow, can I just say how good this car looks. The pixel theme everywhere is so neat. The way that each of these individual pixels lights up when you hit the brakes and the headlights are on, pretty amazing. The one that we're driving is the larger battery pack, somewhere between 75 to 77 kilowatt hour battery pack. The real story here, why won't that open? Uh-oh, did I lock the car? I hope not. What's going on, folks? Let's do this. Let's click. That's lock, that's unlock. Do, do, do. Open charging port. The real story here is the charging of this battery pack. 240 kilowatt peak DC fast charging. I've done a full zero to 100% curve on the Kia EV6. Has a very odd charging curve at around 80%. It dips to like one or two kilowatts to prevent lithium plating, I think. However, one of the fastest charging EVs on sale, acclaimed 10 to 80% in 18 minutes. I think I went from zero to 50% in just about 10 minutes on EV6. I was waiting for that little helicopter to pass for audio reasons, but let me just continue talking about the charging here for a second. Uh, from an AC side, it can do just about 11 kilowatts. I believe it's 10.9. I think it's 40 amps. I could be wrong. And then on the DC side, again, 240 kilowatt peak. That's if you plug it into a charging station capable. There are a few stations left over that do not charge at 800 volts, will not be able to match the pack voltage of this car when plugging in. Therefore, you need a booster with an 800 volt system. The way Tycon does this is with a, a separate converter, basically an onboard DC to DC booster unit that is 50 kilowatts from the factory with an optional upgrade of about $500, 450 bucks, something like that, to get up to 150 kilowatts in the booster. Here in this particular car, there is a, a single standard booster that's about just over 200 amps, so it's gonna be right around 100 kilowatts or so is what you can get, which is really good. But what's more interesting than just the booster is how the car actually boosts from 400 to 800 volts. You see, it has an inverter mounted directly onto the rear motor, which is nice because it's just one motor and inverter package, and it actually runs the power through that inverter. It steps up the voltage and then basically, in a sense, regens the battery through the rear motor inverter to charge, which is so awesome. And I don't know of many stations that still can output or pa match pack voltage at 800 volts. However, if the supercharger network happens to open here in the US, I have my doubts then at least with an adapter for sure, or if Tesla put CCS handles on their connections, you could at least get 100 kilowatts on the supercharger network. I've always said, at least in Tycon, not worth it to get the booster because what stations are left that don't uh, supply the power? And while I think it's unlikely that the supercharger network will open in the US to public, it's possible. Therefore, yeah, I think it's worth getting that option on that car. And I'm glad this car has that as standard 100 kilowatt, which is pretty good. 
Uh, yep, it looks like we have some active aero up front here. In terms of range, I should mention, about 300 miles on the rear wheel drive version and about 260 miles EPA. A little bit less actually on the all wheel drive. Why is it such a huge drop to all wheel drive? That I don't know. I believe it's because they test the cars in key up setting for EPA, which uh, is key ups in normal setting. But when you drive the car in eco mode, it will actually disconnect the front motor entirely. And um, yeah, although driving in normal mode, I think it does that while cruising. And then when you feed in the throttle, then it then it reconnects and uh, you get the extra power. So yeah, I'm not sure why the all wheel drive gets such little range. You do gain some benefits with all wheel drive other than just extra power, um, you know, five second ish, zero to 60. It's properly powered. It's not crazy fast, but it's certainly enough to have fun with. It's a lot more spicy than ID4 in this category of acceleration. We'll be take it out on the roads and I just drove it a little ways up here before the intro. But when we jump in the car, it will genuinely be my first time filming. I just didn't have a chance to film an intro before I got in. Um, yeah, so, so you do get a heat pump with all-wheel drive. You do not get a heat pump for rear-wheel drive in the U.S. I believe it uses a resistive heater, but uh, I will have to confirm with that because in the presentation this morning, Hyundai said it actually doesn't heat up the battery pack. There's no battery heater without all-wheel drive. I don't think that's true. You need a battery heater, at least these days, for a car of this caliber. So anyway, let's take a look around the car in terms of spacing and sizing now that we've gone through some spec -a -roonies. Power trunk. Nice. Oh, that little cargo cover's nasty, isn't it? Why is that here? Ugh. Okay, well, that would be ripped out the first thing I would do. I know a lot of you guys like it, but you guys know I hate those things. That's fine. Still a nice implementation with it pulling in. Underfloor storage-ish. Tire mobility kit. Here we have a J1772 uh, to, let's see, 110 outlet. Yep, and this is the included EVSE. Looks pretty good. How many amps can it do? Let's see. Do, 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 do. 12 amps, nice. Better than those 10 amp units that some of the cars get. So that's a good win, I would say. Uh, don't see any way to have a 240 volt mobile connector, but I'll see if we can find that out. If not, I'm sure they'll sell you that as an accessory. Also, one of the cool things you can do with these eGMP cars is do V2L, vehicle to load. And that means that not only can you put power in with the charging port, you can actually have a little adapter, plug in here and then get power out. Now, if you watch our Kia EV6 review, uh, I actually did this and we charged the Taycan. And uh, here in the US, this is sold as an aftermarket accessory, or I should say it's really an OE accessory. It's part of Hyundai's uh, group, you can buy it. Uh, but it's not included with the car. It can do 1.9 kilowatt continuous. It's about 115 volt output. And then, uh, yep, just, uh, you can run a microwave, run your camp, whatever you want to do. You could charge another car, but you just plug into the J port and it can do V2L. We close the port right there. Uh, let's see, is there another way to close the port? Because that didn't seem super nice. Oh yeah, close. Lovely. That's the way to do it. Let's take a look in the back seat room here. Love these door handles, by the way. Whoa, a lot of room here, folks. A lot of room here. Switching to wide angle. Let's have a seat. Oh, this one's a maxed out, I believe it's called a limited trim this beautiful glass roof. These shades close and meet in the middle. I'll show you that up front. Two USB-A ports. What? How are those not USB-C by now? Can we all agree automakers just USB-C everything these days? Rear air vents. That's lovely. Perfect Uber car, actually. Great legroom. And this seat's really far back. What else do we have? Center armrest, cup holders. Sick. Love the color material trim. Love these pixel lines all throughout here. This is wonderful material usage around. Everything feels high quality, feels happy and light. I would totally get this interior, 100%, even with my dogs. Everyone's always so concerned with white seats. I've honestly never had an issue. That folds quite nicely. Check that out. And then to lift it up. Oh, this is a two-handed operation. Forgive the camera view. Whoa! <laughs> And now we got it locked back in. Sorry if you just got seasick there. These wheels, interesting. We're on Michelin Primacy Tour all season tires. I knew it was a good tire driving it up here. You'll see when we drive it. Good tire, eco tire. Uh, definitely an OE tire adapted for this car for range. And so, um, yeah, I have to say it's really well suited to this 
to this vehicle uh, all around. The wheel tire looks, wheels look good. What I would do to the Ionic 5, I don't know about you guys, I would slam this thing on the ground, bag it, nice wheels, roof racks on the top, then dogs out the windows. <laughs> you can see a couple other Ionic 5 people filming for their videos there. Oh man, I just love the way this car looks. So what do you say we jump inside the front seat and then we'll be able to drive it. But I do wanna show you this sunroof thing. Also, this one has the heads up display with augmented reality. The augmented reality, honestly to me, is not a big deal. I wouldn't make a big fuss about it. Two memory seats, Bose sound system's awesome. I was listening to it. You do have to go pretty high on the volume. Goes up to 75. Why, why 75? I don't know. It kind of felt like I wanted the extra 25 up there. Screens booting up. This is literally car was off right up to a full boot. So you can watch the time that it takes for the screens to come on. Let's wait for it. Let's see. Head up displays on. I could definitely drive away now. Yeah, that took a little while, didn't it? You can have different drive modes. It will actually adapt your adaptive cruise control, other settings and things like this to your drive mode. So it's important you always drive in your mode and your spouse or partner, whoever else drives the car, drives in their mode so the car can help adapt to it. Here's the roof situation. Oh, you push this way and then it pulls back on both ends and they meet in the middle. Nice, and not even a hint of light coming through. How about that? And then you go this way, which is counterintuitive since this is what I'm seeing in my head, but I get what they're going for. Push to close, pull to open. Let's see, we have a glove box here. Air vents, by the way, it can do the driver only mode so it can shut off those vents for efficiency. Totally flat floor, tons of space, very I3 feeling up here. I don't like how huge these bezels are. Personally, I think this looks real chintzy. And the screen, yeah, it's just typical Hyundai nav system. It's good. I would just get it all set up and use CarPlay personally. I talk about the regen levels when we jump in the car, so we'll do that. Forgive the poor efficiency. Don't reference that number. That's from me shredding up here. So it's definitely more efficient than that. Although I do get the impression from other reviews that maybe Kona Electric and Ionic Electric were more efficient than these new ground up cars, at least is what I'm hearing. So I don't know. We'll have to see when we can do our full reviews, tests, and road trips, which we'll definitely be doing with this car. But for now, let's go jump inside and take it for a drive in a few different driving environments. You join me inside the Ionic 5. Wow, it's literally, I just got in. A little bit overwhelming, a lot to do. We have about a 45 minute drive to a little bit of a break point. So let's see, I rotate this little thing down here for drive reverse neutral park. That's so cool. Drive modes, we're in normal. This is an all wheel drive, maxi max one in the gray. I have level one, two, three, and I pedal. I'm gonna drive in I pedal. Have the navigation set up, so let's turn signal on and indicate that we're trying to get out of here in this carnage of Ionic 5. So let's head out this way. Nice 750 here parked in the middle of the road. <laughs> Check this out. This is so cool. It's wonderful in here. I feel like we've just caused a giant traffic jam in the middle of San Diego, which is hilarious, but uh, <laughs> you gotta love it. First off, this is my first time really sitting in the car and getting everything adjusted. I have seat movements. It all feels nice. The steering wheel material is wonderful. Wow. Now I've driven EV6 before. If you haven't took take a look at that video, I had driven that car around uh, the Munich area for a couple days and really enjoyed it, did some charging stuff. We are gonna try and charge this car today. I believe we will be able to. And uh, you'll have to forgive the lady from talking. I can turn her off by doing that. Boom. And we're gonna just continue straight on. Should we start with a launch? Let's just, let's just nail it, right? Yeah, may as well. Dang, it feels good. It's a little bit of delay in normal mode and then just ramps and ramps and ramps. That's pretty sweet. So just continuing down. This thing's huge in here. Holy smokes, it's roomy. I specifically wanted one with this interior since this is the interior I like. I would totally go for this spec, which is the matte gray with white seats. The only thing I don't like about matte paint or frozen paint, oh, cute dog, looks like a wolf. That is a cool dog. Uh, the only thing I'm not a huge fan of with matte paint really is just um, some deposits getting on there and then cleaning them off properly, but whatever. Uh, whoa, I'm just a little bit in shock. This is so cool. It's a car that you all have requested a ton of time with. 
I've wanted to spend a lot of time with. Auto hold on, eye pedal on. What other buttons do I have? Traction control off, that's a good one. We'll try that later on, see how this thing is in some dynamic situations, if you know what I mean. You guys know me, we're gonna shred this thing. Here's what we're gonna do today. I have just a few hours to spend with it. It's sort of the first drive wave, so it's a little bit like Hyundai saying you go here, 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 and here, but we'll we'll do our own thing best we can. Um, yeah, I'm gonna try the sound system. We're gonna talk about the car in depth. I'm gonna drive it around the city and the highway and the mountains. We're gonna charge it. And by the way, my first impressions, just you know, jumping in the car, that was this is my genuine first time driving it. I always like to record these, is extremely positive, glass everywhere, the feeling of quality. And it seems really quiet. Listen. Yeah, there's like trucks and noise going on out there. Roll up the windows. And it all that's really good. Wow, the car makes me happy. I really enjoy it. I also saw a photo somewhere, I'll see if I can include it, of play and pause buttons. Does this one have it? Yes, it does on the pedals. There's a metal brushed option you can get on the pedal. Go for that, it's cool. But they kind of copied Volkswagen with the play and pause situation. But the one pedal driving, I guess since we're just stopped here, let's talk about this. So I'm just gonna tip into it. Zero motor cogging, great throttle response. Comes to a stop so smoothly. Ford, what are you doing? Why can't you just do a nice, smooth one pedal situation like Hyundai and Tesla and Kia? I noticed the same thing with EV6. No one's in the right lane. Let's just go I pedal, lift off, holding the left paddle. Does it make a difference? I don't know. We'll play around with it. Coming to a stop at a green light. Oh, so smooth. Full power. Big power, little laggy on the throttle though. I put my foot down and then it's like, are you sure? And it ramps, ramps, ramps. I wonder if I put it into the sports mode, sport mode, and let's try launching it here. Nope, still laggy. That's weird, why just go when I tell you to go? Anyway, we can see if we can break boost it. We'll try some other tactics maybe that are in there for it to be better. Uh, another thing I think we should try is the turning radius. So. What do you say we just pull into this little parking lot? I don't think an Ionic 5 has ever been to this parking lot. Ooh, good turning radius. Hold on, let's try this. Turning all the way over. Yeah, really nice. Everyone's taking a look at the Ionic 5. And they like it. People like the Ionic 5. Hell yeah. Definitely <laughs> in a place where I don't think any Ionic 5 ever been. Got 7 Series on 20 foes. Let's go rip it. Come on, car, give me power. Why aren't you going anywhere? Why is it slow? I was wide open. Am I in eco, uh, eco mode? Only uses rear motor. I gotta go to normal now. Yep, there's the power. Wow, strong performance, still pulling. Strong performance still. We're just staying pinned, chasing down that Mach-E. Wow, triple digits, uphill, no problem. Nice, but it's not fast, crazy, it's no plaid, but that felt good. Um, again, very initial impressions. Let's try the Highway Driving Assistant 2 this car has. We'll talk more about it all in depth, and we'll spend more time driving on it here in a little bit, but I have everything set. The nice thing about Hyundai's uh, sort of lane centering situation is it will do it regardless of adaptive cruise control status so you can drive with your foot manually and then it will also do auto steering which i love lane changes also it will do by itself look at this keep hands on the steering wheel don't worry i have that's nice very similar to what we experienced in ev6 oh wow so since we're on the highway i guess let's just start here we're doing 67 miles an hour on concrete surface let me take a listen A lot, of, a lot of noise up here, but there's a lot of room up here. Gorgeous glass roof in this particular car. That's, I believe, on mid-spec and up, you can get the glass roof. There's S, E, S, E, L, and Limited, something like that. And um, yeah, on the highway, it's good, but why are we slowing down? I have no idea. It just phantom brake. Why were we braking? I have no clue. But we're letting it do its thing. Very competent lane centering. 
That's good. Oh, maybe maybe not so much around the corner. So it has a couple extra features in uh, highway driving assistant. May as well talk about it now. It's HDA2. So in terms of safety systems, it has forward collision warning, evasive assist, cross traffic in the rear, but also like intersection assist. So if you're about to go through an intersection of cars coming through from the side, it will recognize that and slam on the brakes. There's a lot of like really neat things in this car that it'll do. Um, but on the highway specifically, there's some really interesting stuff. The first is, you know when you're in stop and go traffic with an adaptive cruise control system in the car, sometimes never goes, like it leaves a gap when they pull away um, and it's kind of annoying and you have to always adjust it. Well, this car will learn how you adjust and interact with the cruise control system, uh, either by tapping the accelerator pedal or I assume by hitting the brake pedal. I only know, they only told us how to get it more aggressive not how to make it less aggressive but either way you can train the system with your inputs they said over about a day or two of driving it will react and you'll start to feel it uh, change to drive the way you want it to drive now we've seen adaptive cruise control systems that change behavior based on drive mode for example like an ID4 you can set the adaptive cruise control system to either be very aggressive in sport or eco with leaving a lot of room and gentle accelerations but here it will actually learn you it's tied to driver profile and it will adapt to your driving preferences I guess yeah really good it also has another feature which I really like which is basically altering your position within the lane based on driving scenario so if we're next to like a car and they're swerving around to the right it will push us to the left side of the lane and then bring us back to the middle which I absolutely absolutely love that's such a great feature overall you know the the one thing that I guess it's an SUV type situation. It's a compact utility vehicle, but I do feel like everything is just low in the cabin. And I can't say that I'm personally a fan of that. I really like to sit inside of a car rather than on top of it. And in this car, you're very much sitting on top of it. But for the majority of people who like a high riding position, this is by far a, a fantastic position. Very airy, very roomy, very comfortable. Yeah, just what, what more could you ask for? The biggest thing I don't know at the time of this recording, but I will know by the time this video goes up because they haven't actually, they claim they haven't figured out the price for the US market, it's waiting final approval, um, is the price of this car. I think it's gonna be expensive, but we'll know when this video goes live. I won't be able to include it in the video, but just Google search it and you'll find it. Go to swerveautos.com, our written site, we'll have an article on it. Excuse the mess down here. However, I'm just editing this video and I do know the pricing because Swerve Autos wrote a great article on it and I am just truly blown away by the pricing and value on this car. With a $39,700 starting price before destination for the small battery car, you're into the thing for high 40s, maybe mid 50s for like a maxed out one. Um, it sits right between ID4 and Mach-E uh, but gives you so much better charging per performance. It's really, I think, unbelievably well-priced. It shocked me. I thought for each trim, we were going to see uh, $10,000 more, uh, you know, that Hyundai would charge for the car. I'm just totally blown away by the value. And um, yeah, I'll put the charts up. Of course, you've seen them. Just insane, insane value here, in my opinion. Anyway, let's continue. I'm going to feel my way around this car a little bit. Those are my genuine first impressions in the Ionic 5. And then, of course, we will, um, you know, drive it in a mixed uh, mixed environment. It's going to be a really long video, really, hopefully, in-depth. You learn with me as I go through this whole car uh, throughout this uh, day of program Hyundai's created. But, again, we're going to do the stuff I need to do to share the stuff I want to share with you. Well, as we're nearing the end of my little highway portion here, I have to say I'm impressed with the uh, driving dynamics on the highway, the suspension is unbelievably good. In eco mode, it disconnects the front motor, so it's just rear drive and you get you know, quite a bit less power, but it still works really well. I believe it reconnects for regen no matter what. I could be wrong on that. Uh, could be different tuning than EV6 as well. I believe EV6 did regen, uh, reconnect the front motor. It has like a little clutch pack type situation. Uh, anyway, now we are just exiting off. We're gonna go drive in some more dynamic roads, just using that regen situation to pull us down. The nice thing is, so there's, uh, you know, five levels of regen almost. There's zero, one, two, three, 
and I pedal. I pedal's like full one driving. That's what I would leave it in all the time. It's letting me know there's a vehicle to the right. Thank you very much. Um, I would leave the car in I pedal all the drive. Perfect steering ratio too. The pro like Model Y has the quickest steering ratio. It's so unsettling. And don't get me wrong, Model Y is a great car. I recommend it to a lot of people. But there's two, three, two things that really bug me about that car: the steering ratio and the suspension's way too stiff. In this car, this thing rides nice. This is like a luxury suspension. It rode really great on the highway. Uh, and the steering is is the is a fantastic ratio. Now for performance driving, I don't know. We'll see. But everything about this car just screams the business to me. This is just so well engineered you get the sense that like holy smokes all of the odd harsh frequencies that you can get from time to time are tuned out of the steering system I love that this it's steering itself even though I'm hitting the pedals it's great there's so much technology here that and it's all well integrated yeah I have to say my first you know 15 minutes in the car so far have been extremely positive I haven't really found anything that is sticking out to me as an annoyance which is a big thing rather than finding things that I really love I'm pretty good at finding things I love but I'm also really good at uh, you know just like one little thing bugging me whether it's a noise or it's a control or uh, like for example a brake pedal situation in this car I love it love it all I'm just gonna turn the auto steering off here with one touch one little button and now Brakes feel good. I haven't actually even really used the physical brake pedal yet. No one's really behind us. Sometimes in cars, when you lift off the accelerator pedal and then transition to the brake quickly, it has to ramp regen and it's kind of unnatural. So let's just see how that feels. I'm gonna just two foot it real quick, brake. Wow, that was good. So throttle, 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 brake. Really good. So that was interesting because I had just tapped the brake pedal a little bit, but because uh, I had come off the throttle so much and then hit the brakes a bit. It went into, you know, it's emergency booster. And so it really just got on the brakes hard. We haven't even done performance driving, but that's a good indication that the brakes feel good. Great ABS feel too. Wow. Feel, okay, if we're locking tire there, it's on some eco tires, but wow, this thing feels really, 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 really well sorted and calibrated and um, I, I call me impressed. And we're behind an R class. How about that? It's an R350. I wish it was, you know, the 63 always. That's the spot. If you ever see an R63 in public, tag me. Auto hold holding us at a stop. Will I pedal hold us at a stop? Yes, ish. And then it feels like it's holding us on motor torque. I wonder if the brake lights are on. I bet they are because in Kona they weren't and then they updated it so that it was. Anyway, we're going to go drive some good roads. See you along those. You join me at the base of seemingly some good looking roads. So I have my air conditioned seat on, which is getting ice cold. By the way, when you're in I pedal, which is the one pedal drive, uh, pulling the left paddle does not increase regen anymore, but in full regen number three, it will go full regen if you pull the paddle. So a lot of people don't like the feeling of, of one pedal driving or they prefer the, the pedal to be used for sort of more pedal modulation under throttle, a longer throttle pedal, if you will, so that your usable distance actually works towards moving the car. The nice thing is you can have that and then you can just pull the left paddle whenever you want max regen. Really love that setting. So let's go into some EV stuff here. I click this, electricity use, eco driving. Okay, it doesn't really matter. Let's go into sporty sport mode. So you can, you have eco normal sport and then you can hold drive mode for snow. Wonderful feeling switch gear, really is. And then there's some traction control disabled. I'm gonna keep holding and then traction and stability control disabled. Um, let's just pull out here and see how it does. Big power here in sport mode. Coming around corners, oh, good power. Fast, let's try the braking. Really good brake pedal. Really good brake pedal, a lot of wheel lockup actually. But I like that, I like an aggressive ABS. Coming around the corner. Oh, well that was just one corner, but wow does this thing feel unbelievably well sorted the tire selections nice because you do need obviously you can't have like a cup two on an ionic vibe you'd have no range so i have to look at the tires that we have on here but and i probably will before we hit some really really good roads but uh, just that little initial corner was the car is soft but well controlled the brake pedal is 
really good. I think it's a little bit aggressive on the brake booster when you hit the pedal, um, which is probably fine for this application, which is like throttle, 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 touch the brake, full brakes. Yeah, I just touched the brakes. So it's very aggressive on the emergency situation, but like no one's really gonna drive like that unless you are in an emergency situation. But coming into a corner, if I just progressively roll in, feed in, feed in brakes, the pedal feels amazing. Amazing. I have to talk to one of the engineers at lunch and talk about how they did this brake pedal and how did they tune it so well because in theory it should have quite a bit of regen north of 200 kilowatts by far and uh, actually I'm sure we can find out when we're on the highway I can hit the brakes and it'll tell me how much it's taking in. Even Kona Electric does 200 kilowatts. What I'm curious is how much does the rear wheel drive regen? By the way, heat pump only in all wheel drive, not in a rear wheel drive that uses a PTC heater. They said it had no battery heater in the rear-wheel drive in the presentation this morning. I said, I don't think that's true, but if it is, that's a real disaster. But I don't, I really don't think it is. I'm sure it does its own thermal management situation with a resistive heater rather than a uh, heat pump like in this particular all-wheel drive model. What other stuff can I show you play around with? By the way, um, in terms of climate control, because no one's sitting in the passenger seat, it's in driver only. So I'm the only one getting air conditioning, so we're saving on efficiency there. This is, this is, this is good. This is, oh, I was about to say this is good. It was good, but it's not good. I don't know if you can see this. There's a torque screen here on the display and it's not actually using motor torque. It's done off of throttle calibration. So when I put the car in neutral and floor it, it shows 100% torque. The Kona did the same thing, electric. That's kind of silly, but I'm in neutral. If I keep my foot to the floor in neutral and put it in drive, it should launch. Yep. <laughs> if you're ever doing roll racing on the highway with an EV, not that I recommend anything like that. Neutral, full throttle, put it in drive and bam. I do it in my smart car all the time to get off the line a little bit quicker and some other stuff. It's the old neutral drop, but without a transmission. So let's go find some good roads and enough me blabbering on about weird things about the Ionic 5. But I have to say when it boils down to it, because you know we're gonna spend a lot of time with this car. We're gonna take it on road trips. We're gonna do charging tests. We're gonna do the whole thing you need to do with all the EVs. This is just my first taste. Uh, I think when, when I do my first taste videos, you guys know it's, a, it's not so structured. It's just me sharing my initial thoughts. But what matters is is it improving my day is am i excited happy um wanting to be in this vehicle the answer is a hundred percent this car is stellarly fun that's not even a great way of describing it but beautiful mountains happy car great styling and it's big like it's got a lot of room in photos i thought this car was small i've seen it in person a whole bunch now i've seen this thing for over a year I uh, was one of the first ones to see a prototype out in the wild. Was lucky enough to spot that car in Las Vegas here in the U.S. And uh, they were doing some stuff with Roush Engineering. Let's go find some good road. Join me on a good road now where we're going to start picking up the pace and seeing how this thing hustles through. First off, I get a very Model 3-like impression out the front. Uh, by that I mean visually because I'm sort of sitting up high and the dash is low. I can see everything and I guess it always gives this, oh beautiful S-Class. I guess it always gives this wonderful impression. There's an Ionic 5. It always gives this wonderful impression of the sight lines of the road. So let's start hustling this thing through some corners, right? Power out. Oh, it's got a lot of lean. Like it's it's good at holding itself up. It's soft. It's compliant. This is not the performance one. I think the EV6 is going to be the most performance-y of the three cars in the eGMP platform, at least the initial cars. And I have to say, I really actually like the way this car drives. Now, I'm a fan of soft cars driving fast. There's so many companies that make a car that's way too stiff, and it unfortunately, I think, kills the... Um, Kills the ride on a back road. Polestar 2, for example, is almost too aggressive for a back road with performance pack when you have the damper set to full. Wow. But Hyundai, um, from what I know from friends who work at you know tire manufacturers who do a lot of OE uh, tire engineering work with the Hyundai group, they're very particular with how their cars drive, almost more so than the Germans I've heard. And so that 100% translates into the driving dynamics here, very grown up driving dynamics here. It's amazing how much rear tire it uses when you lean this thing over, it digs on that rear axle and it gives this sense of, 
of, of all, you know, your two outside tires actually working rather than a very understeery platform. This is very neutrally balanced and almost a little bit like pretty spicy on the rear axle. I think this is so cool. Keeping it pinned through here, coming in under braking, chucking in, big power. Whoa, it's good. Making good power too. <laughs> Braking test, by the way, let's just try full brakes. So, cannot really feel ABS through the brake pedal, just because it's a brake by wire situation, I'm sure, but overall, it feels very solid, ample braking performance, and I really like the ABS calibration. Like I mentioned, it's aggressive. You really are really digging the tires in, um, which is nice from a performance standpoint. In terms of cooling architecture, this is an area I really want to dig into more in this car. I've heard um, I've overheated EV6 after charging and then driving fast. I heard Bjorn has done the same. They call it, you know, it's sort of rapid gate for this car. Um, but from what it sounds like is if you just turn off air conditioning, it will divert uh, cooling functionality to the battery pack and it's no issue. Um, what's weird though is that the car doesn't automatically do that and it could be a software thing and we could see it come down the line. Again, I, this is just an initial taste, but it's an area we really need to test because um, yeah, thermal management is so important to an electric car. Uh, my understanding though is uh, it does not uh, divert cabin comfort to battery pack uh, cooling, therefore it limits your charging speed and power output to not overheat the battery. A lot of other cars, including Tesla, will say, sorry, we are dedicating cooling, ripping out in front of a truck. Oh, plenty of room. This thing gets up and boogies. We're already over 60. Um, what Tesla will do, what others will do is they'll say, sorry, it's going to get hot in your cabin. We got to cool down the battery pack, you know, diverting cooling to high voltage systems, something like that. And well, that's probably the right decision to get the maximum numbers, but I could see it going one way or another. Gorgeous views up here, just on the outside of San Diego, California. Very close to Mexico down here. Let's go to Mexico. Anyway, I'm very impressed with the, with the just grown up dynamics of this car. Under braking, chuck it in. It's really well sorted. It's not sporty. In a sense, it's not crazy, you know, amazing, uh, you know, speed, but it's just grown up a little bit like ID4 in that sense, where the car just holds its weight well, carries its weight. Um, the the weight transfers are noticeable; you can feel it, but it's grown up. I keep using that terminology; it's very German-like, honestly. And so, I <laughs> just join me for a quick drive, right? Let's just see what we find out about this thing as we drive it hard coming through under power braking on the dip wow the motors sound healthy too sound really good not even a hint of ABS through there and we had weight moving around on purpose I kind of rocked the car a bit to try and get some wheels light and it just said nope you're good a lot of other cars would have said you know they would have brushed the brake with some rollover protection or not necessarily rollover but just just a hint of stability and perhaps if i had stability control on it would have done that let's turn it on fully by the way let's just see how aggressive it is uh, i'm just gonna you know come with this i don't know if it's police or fire or what it is in front of me but let's just nail it through this corner yeah so it's brushing i can feel it cutting power through there but i mean like that's no one's ever gonna drive a car that hard uh, <laughs> and not turn off stability control. So let's go back to the way I like to drive, which is just me and the tires and this unbelievably well-sorted chassis. Uh, wish we could find some really even, you know, tighter sections of the road to rip around. I'm sure we will, following a fire truck. That's sweet. Love the Cal Fire stuff. They have some of the best equipment around here. Yeah, the steering wheel being a two-spoke doesn't bother me. Normally, I'm not a two-spoke kind of guy, but I have to say this is a, a wonderful wheel. Um, yeah, let's just let's just hold back here a little bit. Let that guy go up ahead. We'll pull over here on the right, and then we will rip it out as soon as we see another car coming. Yeah, wow, I am really loving this thing. It seems so sorted. That's the answer. It's it's almost sorted too much where the car doesn't have too much character because it's like, oh yeah, someone engineered for that. Someone engineered this. This is exactly what you should be feeling is, is my sense of it. 
it's not much like whoa you're like moving around and like uh, the engineers didn't think about that it's everything is calculated that's coming through all the frequencies through the steering the suspension it's very well tuned it has a, a rear subframe that's tuned to damp some road vibrations out of it so let's just start with a launch real quick left foot hard on the brake flooring it go that's the way to launch the car is to do both and then pop off the brake Yes, yeah, so you just stay in it and it helps the rear end come around. Yep, that's exactly, again, engineered for just enough where throttle can help turn the car, but it still diverts to understeer when you really push it too hard. Very good power. It's not, again, crazy fast, but it's just competent in the way that it accelerates. I really, I think there's room for like an Ionic 5 N, if you will, and I think that's in the plans. I don't know, I hope it is, because this chassis with more tire, you know, you put maybe active damper on the suspension that's tuned up a bit, uh, brakes feel great, honestly. And then you just juice that rear axle. Honestly, the front to rear torque split's awesome. Way better than cars like XC40 Recharge and Polestar 2 that have 250 kilowatt motors. It technically makes more power than this car, but at the end of the day, it doesn't feel as good on a back road because as you apply throttle in those cars, they actually end up pushing a little bit. And so in this car, as you apply throttle, it, it doesn't necessarily oversteer. If you're patient with it, I'm sure it, it can. And um, yeah, it, but, but it certainly neutralizes and it, it's a very positive sensation driving this car quickly. So uh, I'm sure we'll have a chance for more dynamic roads. Like I mentioned, this is gonna be a long-ish video really love putting my foot down in this thing driving like this is not very efficient of course but you can see it it's soft it moves but it moves in all the right ways i keep saying the same thing over very impressed i'll catch you uh in a little bit well we are currently uh shredding with an audi i think he had so much carbon buildup when he floored it just a big puff of smoke came out the exhaust and uh, I figured now that I've had a chance, no, we got caught in traffic. I was hoping we could go with the A5 for a little bit, but it was so funny that, you know, when, when people drive these turbocharged direct injection combustion engines around, you know, two miles an hour and then take them up into the canyons once in a while and then you, they put their foot down, just smoke comes out the back and yeah, it's just nasty stuff. That is a benefit of an electric car. It's just the emissions. Ah, oh, I really wish we could have all the fun with combustion because I truly love combustion cars from an enthusiast standpoint, but I don't think I love polluting the planet so much, um, at least with localized emissions. So either way, I think driving an electric car every day, save the gas cars for the weekends. Um, now that I've had a chance to decompress, I actually just shot the intro to this video. I, I thought I'd you know, just share my overall thoughts now that I've spent some time with it. I can give you my impressions of the car and then I think we go and charge it. So on the highway, this car is very comfortable. The sound system, better than expected. It still doesn't go loud enough to me. Um, it's pretty loud, don't get me wrong. Normal people don't care, but I kind of like my ears to bleed. So yeah, need, needs like another couple hundred watts of just bass, but the bass is strong, don't get me wrong. It's got a good subwoofer. So overall, uh, very pleased. There's really nothing bad with the car. The steering's a little bit, you know, numb, and the car's soft and floaty, and that's, <laughs> It's just fun to feel it move around and, and, and you know, the, the whole, like, so many cars are way too stiff for their intended purpose and they beat you up on the road and then when you get really into driving them hard, they give you the impression that they're supposed to be a fast car because you've just been having your head hit the ceiling over every bump and then they're actually kind of soft. It's just like, okay, that's not good. Uh, here though, the car's honest in the way that it drives. It's comfortable and compliant on the street where this car is going to live 99% of its time, but it doesn't fall apart around the corners. You do get this sort of roll action. The car leans over, but with ESB off, when you're going into the tight corners, especially you can mat the throttle, kick the back end out for these little tight, quick things. And like, it's really dynamically, it does everything you want. Like watch this, for example, no one's really behind, right? So I can like power on this way and like kind of be a hooligan with it and get angle this way and get angle that way and then straighten up the car. And that's just me being an idiot, but it responds so well to these inputs and it's roll, rolling uh, rolling over on the tires is nice and it digs into those Michelins really well. So love the tire selection, love 
the suspension calibration, the compromise they took between comfort and sport. My guess is EV6 is going to be a little bit more sporty, but I think this is the way to go. Personally, I, I like this car much better. Consider taking a break. No, I'm, I'm pumped up about your car. I don't want to take a break. I just took a break. Must have been driving too weird for it. Um, <laughs> yep, let's go charge this thing. But driving wise, honestly, I mean this 100% genuinely, there's almost nothing to complain about. Like I would be so nitpicking, but it just hits the mark and it is the mark. That's the thing. This is the new benchmark for all electric cars, factoring price, performance, sizing, styling, mood booster, if you will. You know, I think that's a really important thing. Does the car make you happy to be in it? Yes. It's the new benchmark. I'm, it just is. It smokes everything. Charging wise, the, the big issue is going to be, you know, how are the chargers going to work with this thing? How we haven't tried charging them on Electrify America. How are they going to handle, you know, this high charging rate? Because I find when I drive high power charging cars, I have more issues with Electrify America in general. And they're really the only ones with a network of 350 kilowatt chargers. By the way, two years, three years, I think two years of free 30 minute DC fast charging could be three, but either way, that's awesome. And uh, yeah, I'm really looking forward to see how these cars hold up over time. Oh, the one thing I did want to check was, is there like a charging limit that I can set in this car? So eco electricity use, where are my charging settings? I'll have to play around with it. I'll put it, when we go to the charging station, I'll dig into some of the charging menus. I really want to make sure it doesn't just full charge every day because that would suck, um, you know, just for longevity. I want this thing to charge to 80%, 70% daily, um, which I think is quite an important thing to have in a car. So what do you say we finish this little portion off with a quick send a around some of these corners? And I figured, you know, let's just see how it handles sort of dynamically in some of the tighter corners. Well, so far, feels just great at this type of stuff. Why is this car so good dynamically? It's, I keep saying it's soft, not much steering feel, that's okay. Tight corner, feels good. And big power on the exit. <laughs> Another Ionic 5 ripping the downhill. Oh, this is wonderful. Really is wonderful. Just so easy to drive quickly too. Look at that power on, gets the back end around, gentle under braking. Just you can just hear the tires. The best part about an electric car is you know you get so much feedback from the tire situation on the car that um, you, you hear and feel exactly what's going on, and I just absolutely uh, love that so much because you can just get the car right on the limit. Because tire squeal doesn't mean there's no grip left. It just means, oh, you're kind of getting close to whatever the tire can do. And then, you know, it's up to, to its compound on, on breakaway characteristics for that particular metric. And so this car is really, really solid breakaway. I mean, you can just kind of get right up it the whole time and, and maneuver it around. So I'm pleased. I'm impressed. Now we go charge it. <laughs> this can only mean one thing. Running it down to zero. We're going to log the curve, 350 kilowatt charger. Let's see how this thing does. And now you join us over at an Electrify America fast charger. I actually filmed a charging session with this car. I don't know if I will or won't post it. We'll see. I actually got the car a little bit too toasty trying to run it down. I pulled in at 1% state of charge. Everyone was coming in at like 50. I'm like, oh, wow, must have been ripping it. Uh, so anyway, I really wanted to do a zero to 100% curve, but I knew in the back of my head uh, I was just draining it too fast for it to stay cool. And yeah, I peaked at about 227 kilowatts, held there for a while, and then just like, hit a thermal limit and died i had you know ac off in the car and that just happens when you're charging this fast things will get hot of course so um you know we'll, we'll do a full curve when we get one to test for an extended period of time uh got to stay here at the electrify america station worked perfectly uh it was really great plugged in and went we had one fault issue i don't know if it was on the car but at least the plugging and the charging situation worked uh they were free vend mode so i didn't get to see if it has plug-in charge i actually don't know uh and test any of that but i have to say what a great day driving the ionic 5 it really is a pleasant car makes your day better look there you you really can't <laughs> say anything really that bad about this car objectively or subjectively you could you could say you don't like the styling or whatever i don't know but like 
as a car, it's really, really solid. And it was proven to me today, um, we, you know, maybe it could have better cooling, sure. But you're never gonna run into situations like I did today in real life. And driving it hard, which almost matters more to me, didn't overheat at all. I drove the snot out of this thing and it really didn't derate it all until I was down to about 5% state of charge or so. And that's just because pack voltage was low. So anyway, really impressive. And um, I guess before we wrap up, let me show you the little V to L situation. I showed you in the Kia EV6 video, but I'll show you here too. And take a look at this. This is the little adapter, very similar to what we've seen on EV6 when we tested it, where it goes into the J1772 port. I guess it goes through one of the inverters, pops out 1.9 kilowatt continuous. When you charge a car, they pull about 1.2, so it's definitely more than enough to charge a car on a wall outlet. It would take a while, but if you want to charge up your e-bike or run your campsite off this thing, or really anything that you need a wall out for, well, you can do it right here. You can even set a thing in the car that says when it gets to 20% state of charge or whatever it is, it will actually shut down this unit so you don't run itself dead really really neat unit have to say big fan love this thing and yeah i think it's eaten the uh eaten the charger here i guess i gotta hit manually unlock in the car or unlock on the key then it will let it go super cool stuff for sure gotta love it and a huge fan of ionic 5 after today it's really just objectively a good car and then subjectively to me just i'm really into the styling made my day so much better especially in that gray with white seat spec. Thanks so much for watching another out of spec reviews video. Sorry it was a long one. Hope you enjoyed it. We'll talk soon. Bye-bye.